Hello, I'm Christophe Diken, and this is a short introduction about the NetX Exchange protocol and the first video of a series explaining what NetX is and how it can be used. Uh, NetX is a European standard defined by the CEN and is part of the European regulation for the exchange of any mobility related data. NetX is covering all public transport modes, meaning that any mean of transport being advertised to the public is in the scope of NetX. It does, of course, cover traditional public transport like bus, tram, trains, metro, uh, whether they are interurban, long distance, local, etc. Uh, NetX is also covering on demand transport like virtual lines, where the booking is mandatory, but also hail and ride or zonal transport. It has to be remembered that NetX is also covering. Vehicle sharing, like bike sharing or car sharing, vehicle pulling where a driver is offering a trip to passengers, vehicle rental, transport network companies like Uber or even taxis. The global view of the mobility offered by NetX is very important, especially for passengers. Uh, for example, one may start a journey from his home using his car, park at the station, so in a parking, and, and then take the train and at the end of his journey use bike sharing, for example, to get to the, his final destination. Um, NetX allows to describe all this. Uh, so that is a very important point in NetX. NetX provides a comprehensive and seamless description of such journeys. NetX is focusing on planned data and information meaning any information known in advance is part of NetX. Planned information has to be understood as opposed to real-time information, not as opposed to dynamic information. For example, a special service uh, with re related fares defined for a specific event like a football match is defined in, in advance. Uh, also, replacement service uh, can be defined in advance and then only trigger under certain conditions like, for example, some, some bad weather. And the price of a parking, which is evolving during the day, is dynamic, but is known in advance, so it is planned. Only the information that is really changing from what is planned, like the change of passing time or disruptions or any unexpected event, will be real-time and managed with Siri, not with NetX. NetX is addressing a set of different domains. The first of them is, of course, the network description, where you describe the lines, uh, the stops, the fare zones, the connections, etc. Uh, this is usually a kind of topological uh, description, the kind of description you would find on a schematic map. It is also important to be able to describe the geometry and the geographic layout of the network, especially for stops where you need to be able to describe where the shelter is, where the vehicle is stopping, if there is any place to sit, etc. Uh, the entrance of the station is also an important thing. So the geography is, of course, also covered by NetX. When using NetX, one of the first expectations is to be able to provide a comprehensive description of the timetables with the passing time, the waiting times, uh, associated calendars, so meaning when, on which days the vehicle journeys are, are running, or also having the information about the notes that you often find in timetables. NetX provides a way to fully describe the vehicles, so the buses, the trams, the trains and their composition, uh, the cars, but also the bicycles, the scooters, and in fact, any kind of vehicle that can be used in the context of a mobility service. The point of interest, which are a point that can be the beginning or the end of a journey, like a cinema, a city hall, a business area, are also part of NetX. Parking are also very important in NetX since they cover the modal transfer. So when you go from the car domain to the public transport domain. In the parking, you can describe parking zones, parking base, a place where you park your car, uh, the entrances, entrances for vehicles, of course, but also the entrances for pedestrian and everything you need to know about the prices of that parking. NetX is, of course, used for passenger information but it does also provide a comprehensive way to describe the operations of the networks. 
for example, it can describe the run times and the evolution of these run times during the day, uh, the timing points, which are key points where you define the main passing times, uh, the list of the services that a single vehicle will run in a day, etc., etc. So, in, in fact, more of the half of NetX is dedicated to describing the operation of the network. So this makes NetX a very good choice to exchange information between the system of an operators or between operators. Uh, so NetX is definitely not limited to passenger information. Uh, all, NetX does also covers the fair description, the fair offer that contains fair products, the access right, the user profile, the sales conditions, the distribution channels, and of course, when available, the prices. It has to be noted that when the price is dynamic, like it often happens for trains, for example, long distance trains, then NetX can refer to a pricing service. A comprehensive description of equipments and local services is also available. You can describe the lifts, the stairs, the travel letter, the escalators, the ticketing devices, the displays, or the toilets. Uh, every equipment you need to describe. Uh, equipments can be provided for sites, so any place, or for vehicles. Equipments and services are, of course, of high importance to describe the accessibility of the network, places, and vehicles. Uh, NetX is providing a huge set of details to qualify the accessibility of mobility services. Uh, accessibility is covering the, the any kind of accessibility need like wheelchairs, visual impairment, auditory impairment, etc. Uh, of course, uh, this is complemented by the full description of walking pass, pedestrian pass, inside stations or inside point of interest, but also for connections, so outside uh, of the network. NetX is suitable to exchange information with passenger information systems, of course, but also with scheduling systems, uh, AVMS, ticketing systems, and in fact, any systems involved in mobility services. Uh, all these systems are using different concepts and have different point of view, and NetX is ensuring the consistency across all these mobility-related systems. So that's also a key point for using NetX. It is very important to understand that NetX is part of an ecosystem, the Transmodal ecosystem. A Transmodal is the global conceptual model defining the concepts, their definitions, and their relation. NetX is based on Transmodal, corresponding in fact to its exchange protocol for planned information. Uh, Siri uh, is complementing it for uh, real-time information and Opera will soon be available for observed information. Being all based on transmodeling make them fully consistent with each other. For example, the lines or the stops in NetX are exactly the same as in Siri or Opera. Uh, NetX is often compared to GTFS or GBFS and Siri to GTFS RT. These are alternative format, good format too, but focusing a specific use case, which is mainly feeding a journey planners. Uh, NetX is covering a much larger set of use cases with all kinds of passenger information, uh, all kinds of modes, uh, and also operational information, keeping consistency across all these domains and uh, modes of transport. TAP TSI, defined for rails, can also be seen as a subset, a functional subset uh, of NetX, and a mapping has been done between TAP TSI and NetX. NetX development was started in 2009, but the transmodal development on which it is based was started mid 90s. Uh, so, this is a proven and strong and long lasting ecosystem. The European regulation recently made this ecosystem mandatory for European countries, mainly making NetX and Siri mandatory for their national access points. Additional protocols from this same ecosystem like OGP, which is an API for journey planners, uh, or OPRA, which is for observed data that can be used as input for uh, statistics and, and indicators, will also most probably in some futures be part of the regulation. Being a little more technical, uh, it is important to keep in mind that NetX 
is providing the initial information and all the following updates, uh, meaning that it must manage the life cycle of the data. Uh, therefore, every single information can have a version and a validity period. Uh, it's very important, for example, when you want to provide information in advance, uh, new information and update in advance, so the system can have sufficient time to manage it. Or it's also important when uh, a user wants to make some requests in some future or check how the information was in some past. Of course, in order to properly manage the data life cycle, it's mandatory for every single data to have a unique and stable identifier. This is even more important when several stakeholders are involved. Um, NetX is also offering the possibility to refer data outside of the current data set, typically to refer some stops defined in the national database, for example. This is an example of how NetX data looks like. As you can see, it's very similar to HTML since they are both kind of XML based. So Technically, managing uh, HTML or XML data is quite similar. Uh, in this example, which is about uh, a stop in the Paris area, you can easily see the name of the stop, uh, its location, the fact that it's monomodal, uh, the road on which it's uh, located, uh, the fact that it's a bus stop, etc. Et as a comparison, uh, this is an extract of the stop list uh, of the city of Rennes in France, uh, but using uh, GTFS. Uh, as you can see, uh, it's not less complicated and, and it contains much less information. That does not mean that GTFS is not effective. It is effective, but it is focusing on the smaller set of data, mainly for feeding information to journal planners. As for other standards, uh, NetX is most often used with profiles. A, a profile is a subset of NetX focusing uh, on the specific use cases and the local context. Uh, therefore, profiles are much smaller documents, making them quite easier to read. Uh, they focus on a subset of concepts too, so it's a very good start for NetX uh, newcomers. Uh, a profile can focus on uh, stops, uh, on accessibility, on parkings, etc. Uh, there are some profiles at national or even local level, but also at European level. If you start drafting your own uh, profile, uh, that's a good recommendation to start from a, a European profile. So I hope that you now understand better the scope of NetX. Uh, please refer to the other video of the series and also to the data for pt website for more information and training sessions um, and thank you very much for watching bye